we all know that in the last decade, the US has become increasingly wary of Chinese intentions and capabilities. In the last two to three years, the uneasiness has increased exponentially, with China taking a very aggressive posture. US Strategic Command's chief has made some key observations in this regard and drawn a few crucial conclusions. United States Navy Admiral Charles A. Richard, who currently serves as the 11th commander of United States Strategic Command, has provided his insights at the Naval Submarine League's 2022 Annual Symposium and Industry Updates Awards Luncheon on November 3rd and were subsequently published by DOD, that is the Defense Department. U.S. Strategic Command is one of 11 unified combatant commands in the U.S. Department of Defense and is responsible for America's nuclear triad. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes what U.S. Strategic Command's chief thinks about the rivalry with China. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Navy Admiral Charles A. Richard has warned that the U.S. should anticipate and prepare for a protracted conflict with China in the near future and the conflict in Ukraine is just a prelude. Richard said, this Ukraine crisis that we're in right now, this is just the warm-up. The big one, i.e. a conflict with China, is coming. And it isn't going to be very long before we're going to get tested in ways that we haven't been tested in a long time. He said, we have to do some rapid, fundamental changes in the way we approach the defense of this nation, the U.S., indicating that conflict with China will be a different caliber of conflict to Russia's all-out invasion of Ukraine, which began in February. Basically, he's warned that a conflict with China is imminent and the intensity would be far higher compared to what we're witnessing in Ukraine. U.S. level of conventional and nuclear deterrence against the country is slowly eroding. Richard offered a very worrying assessment of the U.S. level of conventional and nuclear deterrence against China. He stated, As I assess our level of deterrence against China, the ship is slowly sinking. It's sinking slowly, but it is sinking, as fundamentally they, China, are putting capability in the field faster than we are. As those curves keep going, it isn't going to matter how good our operating plan is or how good our commanders are or how good our horses are. We're not going to have enough of them, and that's a very near-term problem. Viewers may note that China has significantly overhauled almost every aspect of its military. It has, in some areas, reached parity with the U.S., and in a few, even surpassed, like in hypersonic weapons. As head of U.S. Strategic Command, Richard has expressed concerns about the U.S.'s ability to field effective nuclear deterrence against China that could prevent the communist regime from engaging in an all-out invasion of Taiwan. He explained new nuclear threats from Russia and North Korea are vividly illuminating what nuclear coercion looks like and how you, or how you don't, stand up to that. This comment can be seen in the context of North Korea's recent missile tests and in the backdrop of reports that senior Russian military leaders recently had conversations to discuss when and how Moscow might use a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine. Richard said one area where the U.S. still dominates is with its underseas capabilities, the U.S. submarine fleet. Undersea capabilities is still the one 
maybe the only one true asymmetric advantage we still have against our opponents, Richard said, but unless we pick up the pace in terms of getting our maintenance problems fixed, getting new construction going, if we can't figure that out, we're not going to put ourselves in a good position to maintain strategic deterrence and national defense. While China has built up its undersea assets, it's not figured out the technicalities of developing stealthy submarines as per modern standards. It still has a lot of catching up to do when it comes to fielding subs with low observable characteristics. Chinese sources reported that the Type 093's noise level is on par with the American improved Los Angeles and Russian Akula class at 110 decibels. In 2009, USN ONI listed the Type 093 as being noisier than Russian Project 671 RTM, NATO reporting name Victor 3, which entered service in 1979. Richard stated, beyond nuclear deterrence, and in order to modernize at pace with its competitors, the U.S. military must be able to develop and field new technologies and capabilities quickly. He said, we used to know how to move fast, and we've lost the art of that. We've got to get back into the business of not talking about how we're going to mitigate our assumed eventual failure to get Columbia in on time, and B-21 and LRSO and flip it to the way we used to ask questions in this nation, which is, what's it going to take? Is it money? Is it people? Do you need authorities? What risk? That's how we got to the moon by 1969. We need to bring some of that back. Otherwise, China is simply going to outcompete us, and Russia isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Columbia-class submarines are supposed to replace the Ohio-class SSBNs, B-21 Raider is meant to replace B-2 Spirit, and LRSO, or Long Range Standoff Weapon, is to replace the Air Force Boeing AGM-86 air-launched cruise missile. Regaining the advantage in other areas, apart from undersea capabilities, might mean looking backward as much as 60 years or more, Richard said. One example he provided was that of the AGM-28 Hound Dog cruise missile which entered service in 1960. The Air Force went from a request, almost written on a napkin, when they figured out in the late 1950s that the Soviet integrated air defense systems were getting to the point that the B-52 just wasn't going to make it in, and we needed a thing called up cruise missile, and so they envisioned what a standoff weapon looks like. The U.S. military was able to deliver the Hound Dog cruise missile in just 33 months. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.